prayers with Allah and mm -hmm. disobeying parents. Mm. He had been reclaiming, but then he set up and said, be, be, um, uh, be aware of lying. Mm. Our added, he continued to repeat it until I wished he would stop. To stop. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Country? Uh, hold on, that's Abu Bakr. Okay, commentary. Okay, Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how crucial any matter was either by repeating a question regarding the matter of employee emphasis or even changing his posture, mm -hmm. uh, all of which we employed in this study. Mm. He could also merely touch the companion on the Yes. or hold his hand amongst other means. Hmm. Uh, uh, the narration uh, shows that some major sins are still worse than some others. And from the worst sin one is offending the parents, rebelling against them, and serving relationship with them which are all contradictory to being beautiful to them. Hmm. It also indicates that the companion, companion so the brother the one whom and had great concern of for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, my comment also. May I give my comment <laughs> for this hadith of this chapter, right? Um, as it is mentioned in the uh, uh, commentary for this hadith, yeah? um, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would show how crucial and the matter was either by repeating a question. Here, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he repeat this word, Ala unabbi'ukum bi akbaril kabair. Shall I tell you which is the worst of the major sins? He repeat three times. Yeah? So, um, when the Messenger of Allah, he repeat, a matter three times it show how crucial it is first point second point it is um, he asked the companions to concentrate what he is going to tell them okay so the messenger uh, asked their their attention to the things which the messenger will Yani tell them that how important is what is he going to tell them. Okay? So, this is Kalima, ala unabbiukum. And then, um, the companions, they said, qalu bala ya Rasulullah. So, so, it indicates that the companions, radiallahu anhum, had great concerns for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Where they said, Bala. Ala unabbiukum. He said, Bala. Not na'am. Not yes. Okay? But they said, here, Bala. Of course, in our translation, Bala means, is the same also as na'am. Means yes. In Arabic terminology, is different. Okay? Bala is more powerful. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Just for example, um, Alasta Safwan, aren't you Safwan? So I said, Bala, of course. Of course. Yeah. So, but Naam, huh? Alasta Birabikum, for example. Yet to emphasize. Yeah. So, this is Kalima Bala, Ya Rasulullah. It indicates that the companions, radiallahu anhum, had great concerns for the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in this hadith for example, shall I tell you which is the worst? Shall I tell you? Shall I tell you? That means Rasulullah he asked the intention, he pay attention please to what he is going to tell you. It must be something very, very important. Okay? So he did it three times. And then the Sahaba said, Bala ya Rasulullah. Then the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam further he said, Okay? That the uh, major sins. First one is Al Ishraku Billah. 
associating something else with Allah in worship. Okay, associating with Allah something with Allah in 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 uh, ibadah. And uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He said in Al Quran Al Karim in so many ayat of course that uh, Al Ishraq Billah or associating anything else with Allah in obedience in, in ibadah. Um, is the very great or major sin for those who does it and he died na'udhu in that situation kufur or shirk to Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive him in akhirat let me refer to ayat in Al-Quran uh, first uh, please refer surah An-Nisa ayat 48 and second ayat same chapter ayat 116 please refer your Quran okay. chapter 448 chapter 448 okay surah An-Nisa okay Ayat 48 Anybody would like to read for me? A'udhu Billahi Nish Shaitan Ar-Rajim What is the ayat? Inna Allah La yaghfiru Ayyushraka bihi Wa yaghfiru Ma duna thalika Liman yasha' وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ اِفْتَرَى إِثْمًا عَظِيمًا yeah. What is the translation for this ayat? Uh, whoever uh, associates something with Allah, mm. uh, Allah will never forgive him. Mm. Uh, and le- uh, less than that, mm-hmm. uh, if Allah wish, man forgive him. Yeah. Uh, whoever associating uh, <coughs> something to Allah, he is uh, he is doing some mm. propagating something. Mm. Right. In Allah. Inna Allah, inna is indeed Allah Subhanahu wa Taala la yaghfiru, does not forgive. Ayyushraka bihi association with him. Okay. So this is the ayat Inna Allah la yaghfiru ayyushraka bihi So one of the very major sins Allah doesn't forgive association with him okay. Those also who associated him in worship With anything else And died in that condition Allah will not forgive him In akhirat Eh? وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ But he forgives what is less than that. لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ For whom he wills. وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ And he who associates others with Allah in ibadah فَقَدْ افْتَرَى إِثْمًا عَظِيمًا Has certainly fabricated a tremendous sin. So this is a dalil. Okay? That Shirk is the great or the major sins which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive such person in akhirat. Okay, okay second ayat uh, 116 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in this ayat 116 okay. yeah chapter same chapter Verse 116 Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Inna Allah La yaghfiru Ayyushraka bihi Wa yaghfiru ma duna Thalika liman yasha They're the same eh, The words But so, so the end of this ayat is different with the previous one Wa man yushrik billah And he who associates Others with Allah 
فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالًا بَعِيدًا نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ has certainly gone far astray طيب so this is a dalil طيب how about another ayat uh, let me also refer another ayat surah uh, az-zumar chapter 39 verse 53 okay 39 Surah Az-Zumar verse 53 Okay Fadlan Ya Akhi Qul Ya Ibadi Al-Ladhina Asrafu Ala Anfusihim La Taqnatu Min Rahmatillah إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم قل سيبليس okay سيبليس أو مسني أف الله this is an order from Allah to the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم يا عبادي أو my servants أو my slaves my servants يا عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم who have transgressed against themselves by sinning لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله. Do not despair of the mercy of Allah. إن الله indeed يغفر الذنوب جميعا. Allah forgives all sins. إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. Indeed, it is He who is the forgiving the merciful. So what do you think, brothers and sister? The two ayat, the previous two ayat, chapter four, forty-eight. And one upon one six and this ayat isn't it contradict? What do you think? Allah said in the previous ayat that He won't okay, uh, forgive the sin of shirk, but here said that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He forgives all sins, including shirk. So anybody would like to help me? How this ayat is contradict, isn't it? Allah only says not, uh, as Allah uh, uh, inspires not to despair of the mercy. Mm -hmm. So here Allah is giving chance to come back. To yeah. Repent, okay. To repent. To repent. Okay. 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 Of course. But the the previous ayat that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said that He won't, He will not, yani for forgive yeah. for those who associate Him with anything else in ibadah. And in this ayat, okay, in that ayat, just the first ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, He will not forgive it. Okay? Except another kind of sins. But in this ayat, that He will forgive all type of sins. That is the word actually. First is la yaghfiru, and here is yaghfiru dhulu wa jami'a. In the previous ayat, la yaghfiru, that He will not forgive. But in this ayat, that He will forgive all sins. Isn't it contradict? <laughs> okay. Then how to 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 make or to understand these two ayat? Is a lot like contradict. Actually, it is not. Okay. This ayat, thirty-nine verse uh, fifty-three. Okay, for those who commit that sins, who associate Allah but still alive here, he's still alive. Then maybe one day he wants to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah said, Despair not from the mercy of Allah. Come to me. Okay, and ask my forgiveness. I'll forgive you. Then they said, Here, in this dunya, those people who associate Allah in worship with anything else, Allah call all of them and not to despair from the mercy of Allah. And Allah said, Come back to me. Ask my forgiveness, I'll forgive you. Okay? So this is this way not from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Allah in, in, in uh, um, chapter 11 verse number 3 وَأَنِسْتَغْفِرُ رَبَّكُمْ ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ Okay? Another surah surah Hud Surah Hud, 
chapter 11 verse number 3 okay. <coughs> read the ayat wa anis taghfiru rabbakum thumma tubu ilayhi that is the ayat and saying Istaghfiru Rabbakum Seek forgiveness of your Lord Seek forgiveness of your Lord Thumma And Tubu ilayhi Repent to him Okay Please repent to him Even from the Shirk Associating Allah With anything else in worship Okay That is the major sin But for those who commit it And after that they repent to Allah with sincere repentance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He promised that He will forgive him. Um, uh, ya ayuhal ladhina amanu Tubu ila Allahi Tawbatan nasuha Asa rabbukum ayukafiru ankum sayyatikum So, the ayat uh, Chapter 448 and 116 That ayat is talking about In akhirat, not here In the day of judgment In the day of Ibsab Okay, all kind of sins Okay Will be forgiven by Allah It's up to him, he may forgive, he may not Accept shirk Associating Allah with anything else no way, Allah will not forgive it. But the rest is up to him. He may forgive, he may not. Okay? So, shirik, na'udhu billah min dhalik, is the major sins. Wal'iyyadhu billah. And in another ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna shirika la zulmun azim. Surah Luqman, verse number 13. Yeah? Chapter 31, verse number 13. Taib. Wa idh qala luqman wa libbanihi wa huwa ya'idhuhu. Ya bunayya. La tushrik billah. Inna shirka la zulmun azim. Yes, surah 31, verse number 13. And also <coughs> mention of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when Luqman said to his son while he was instructing him, Mawizah, Oh my son, do not associate anything with Allah. Indeed, association with Him is greed, injustice. Wal-iyyadu billah. Yeah. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min an nushrika bika shay'an na'lamu. Yeah, we ask refuge with Allah from associating Him with anything else in worship. Taib? This is very, very important. Okay? Ashirk billah. So, Ashirk in Al Quran or Sunnah al Mawiyah is referred to Ashirk fil Ibadah. Associating Allah in Ibadah, not in concept of Rububiyah, concept of Lordship. No. Ashirku fil ibadah. Okay? Not in the concept of lordship. Because everyone believes that Allah is the creator. Even Mushrik in Makkah. Okay? Let me read for one ayat only. Surah 29, verse number 61. Al Ankabut. Surah Al Ankabut. <coughs> Surah Al-Ankabut 2961 Surah Al-Ankabut Jangan kelangkabut ya, Surah Al-Ankabut Taib. Taib. 2961 Qalahu ta'ala Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Wa la iya sa'altahum Man khalaq as-samawati wal-ard Wa sakhara as-shamsa Wal-qamar La yaqulunna What they said La yaqulunna Allah 
Okay Wala in sa'altahum And If you are Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And now you yourself Myself and all of us If you ask Them here means Mushrikin Makkah in that time And now Whosoever associate Allah the Mushrikin You may raise this question to them And have a dialogue with them By asking them Who created the heavens And earth and subjected the sun and the moon, they would surely say, what they said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fa'anna yufakun, then how are they deluded from the truth? So, what has been here? That no uh, mushrikun, they did a shirik in ibadah, not in rububiyyah. They believe in Allah as the creator. Of the universe okay they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah who subjected everything in this world according to his uh, what is uh, sunnah of course then associating of Allah here is in ibadah not in rububiyah not also in sifat and asma that is why Every Rasul alayhi salatu was salam Okay They invite They are people by saying U'budullah Okay Every Rasul alayhi salatu was salam Every time Allah sent a messenger To his people It indicates That his people associating Allah They associated Allah in their worship You see The first Rasul who sent by Allah on earth was Nuh alayhi salam <coughs> You may refer to Surah Nuh okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him to his people <coughs> and he said okay? Surah Nuh which chapter? Chapter 71 is it? Yeah. Chapter 71 verse 3 verse number 3 What the Nuh alayhi salam said to his people He said Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Ani abudullah Ani abudullah Wattaquhu wa ati'oon Yaghfir lakum min dhunubikum He said to his people Worship Allah Wa'abudullah Worship Allah And fear him and obey me Allah will forgive you of your sins Alright So so what was the uh, the uh, answer or the comment of his people? They said, <coughs> ayat number twenty-three. His people said, especially the chiefs and the leaders, yeah, al mala waqalu, and they said, la tadarunna alihatakum. Never leave you gods. Aliha takum. Aliha is a plural of ilahun. One god is ilahun. Wa ilahukum ilahu wahid. So here, aliha takum. <coughs> never leave you gods. Wala <coughs> tazarunna. And never leave. There are five gods has been worshipped by the people of Nuh alayhi salam. Who are they? Wadda. Number two, or wala suwa'a suwa'a. Wala yaghuth or yaghuth. Wa ya'uq and ya'uq. Wa nasra and nasr. They are five idols which the people of Nuh alayhi salam worshipped. Okay? Then, when they worship or associating Allah with anything else Then Allah has sent Among them His messenger And the first messenger of Allah on earth was Nuh alayhi salam Then he said to his people just now Allah. After Nuh that followed by another Rasul 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 Until Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Okay You can refer in uh, Surah 7 for example Starting from ayat 59 Until ayat 158 Chapter 7 59 referred to Nuh alayhi salam 65 to Hud Next then followed by Saleh Followed by Shu'ib 
followed by Lut, followed by Musa alayhi salam, and the last one by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, chapter 7, 1, 5, 8. Qul ya ayyuhan nas, inni rasulullahi ilaykum jami'a, alladhi lahu mulku samawati wal ard. Eh? And then, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, wa'budullah. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That there is no God for you except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Chapter 7, 1, 5, 8. From chapter 7, starting from ayat 59 until 1, 5, 8. So, please refer in your home, yeah? That, that ayat. Okay. Then, uh, <clears throat> come back to our topic, yes, now that uh, shirik is one and the very, the major sins. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive that sins. Okay? If that person he died eh? but if he's still alive here in this dunya and repent to Allah with sincere repentance Allah forgive all sins including shirik it's not contradict these two ayat actually okay one is in this dunya and the other one is in akhirat Ta'ib. so coming to our uh, hadith here then uh, the uh, second point here wa'aququl walidain Okay, the, the major sins number two, walidain, disobeying parents. Disobeying parents. Okay. In another hadith, Rasulullah says that will not enter those who disobey his parents. La walidain. Those who disobey his parents. Okay, this is the point. Number two in this hadith, and the chapter here disobedient to parents. Yeah? That disobedience to parents is a major sin. Yeah? Taib. Subhanallah al karim. And uh, uh, next hadith. Tafadali. Hablu min al nas. I mean, the major sin okay. is the relationship with your creator. Yeah, with Allah. Mm. But with his creation, that is disobeying Allah. Mm. I mean, disobeying parents. Mm. Disobeying parents is one of the major sins. Yeah, but he said, of all the major sins, the mouth and kind would be disobeying Allah. Mm. Now, actually, if you refer to another hadith, they are, Rasulullah said, in one hadith, one narration. There are seven types of great sins. Either it is hamlu min Allah or hamlu min nas. For example, in this ayat and this hadith, beware of lying. Qawlu zur. They are lying, especially when it is, for example, in mahkamah. Okay? So you cannot lie. Type, uh, one of the sifat for ibad al-Rahman, walladhina la yashhadun zur chapter 25 verse number 72 yeah walladhina la yashhadun az-zur wa idha marru bil laghwi marru kirama okay surah 25 sifat ibad ar-rahman okay who are the ibad ar-rahman wa ibad ar-rahman alladhina yamshuna ala ardi hawna wa idha khatabahum al-jahilun qalu salam وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لَرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدَ وَقِيَامًا وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا صْرِفَ عَنَّا كَانَ غَرَامًا إِنَّهَا سَاءَتْ مُسْتَقَرًا وَمُقَامًا وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَنْفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا وَلَمْ يَقْتُرُوا وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامًا وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخر ولا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ولا يزنون ومن يفعل ذلك فأولئك يلقى أثاما يضعف له العذاب يوم القيامة ويخلد فيه مهانة والعيض بالله إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل عملا صالحا فأولئك يبدل الله سيئاتهم حسنات وكان الله غفورا رحيما ومن تاب 
fa innahu yatubu ila Allahi mataba then next ayat wal ladina la yashhaduna az-zur chapter 25 verse 72 okay you know already the ayat isn't it you memorize already <laughs> alhamdulillah <laughs> starting from ayat number 64 until 76 64 yeah. Six, yeah but i refer just now ayat 72 okay wal ladina la yashhaduna az-zur Okay, when you are in um, um, mahkamah, do not lie. Because this is qawl al-zur. So Rasulullah said, beware of lying. Beware of lying, beware of lying. When Rasulullah said that one of the major, major sin, lying to the people is one of the major sin. Qawl al-zur. Okay, this is hablu minanas, isn't it? This is one of the major sins. Okay? So there is, uh, of course, no difference between Hablum in Allah and Hablum min nas Both are yeah, major sins. As a mu'min, we have to stay away from it. Qawl zur And when he said Qawl zur Qawl zur Rasulullah, Salah Hassan, he continued to repeat it. Okay? okay he was, Nabi Salah Hassan, he had been reclining. But then he sat up he sat up and said, Beware of Qawl al-Zur. Ala wa Qawl al-Zur. Ala wa Qawl al-Zur. He repeated many times until Abu Bakr, he added that actually I wished he would stop. When Rasulullah, he repeated many times, that is indicate that is the one of the major sin. Ala wa Qawl al-Zur. Ala wa Qawl al-Zur. And today, this dunya, this world is full of the Qawl al-Zur. Wal iyyazu billah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all mu'minin. Okay? To have sifat mahmudah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu, ittaqullah. Wa qulu qawla sadida. Chapter 33, verse number 71. Okay? Qawla sadida, yuslih lakum a'malukum, yaghfir lakum dhunubakum. So, if we want to know, the quality of iman and taqwa of a mu'min, you can see his word. He, he is always speak good and right is a mu'min. If, yani otherwise, he's munafiq. Because Rasulullah Sallallahu said, ayatul munafiqi, thalathun. Idha hadafa, kadhaf. Wal'iyudhu billah. For mu'minin, unless, yani, keep the, our mouth, I mean, our word, yani, rightly and good. And this is one of the indication of the taqwa is a mu'min always gave his mind. For Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, whosoever believe in Allah and hereafter, let him speak good or silent. Fadhali. What about the hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, get the blessing of Allah through the blessing of your parents. So even if a person may be too old in his birth, but not be nice to the parents, hmm. Yes, This is a great sin. First one, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our parent. Allah. Chapter 4, verse 7, uh, verse uh, 36. Chapter 4, 36. Eh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in that ayat. وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِعْسَانًا Then, وَبِذُ الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِنِ Follow this. There is the sequence laid out by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After Allah is our parent, then our kindred, then those people, even our jiran, our neighbor. Okay? Subhanallah al-Karim, the nearest jiran, uh, and the father, and even our friends, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, subhanahu so beautiful, he laid out, who are there that we have to, yani do ihsan, in that ayat, first ihsan is to Allah, how, do not associate him, with anything else, in ibadah, second one, ihsan to your parents, obey him, obey them, as long as it is not against shari'at, okay, if your parents, ask you to do, yani, uh, ma'asiyah to Allah, wal'iyudhu billah, Obey them not. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in surah Luqman ayat number 14 وَوَصَّيْنَ الْإِنسَانِ okay, uh, بِوَالِدَيْهِ until ayat number 15 okay, if they ask you to associate me okay, with anything which you don't know which you don't know it then فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَ وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَنْ تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِي عِلَمْ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَ وَصَحِبِهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا طيب so there's the ihsan to our parents ihsan to our kindred ihsan all to the people also in another surah chapter number 17 verse number 23 you may refer eh? طيب come back to uh, the second hadith brother Amanullah Mm -hmm. Muawiyah wrote to Al Mubia and mm -hmm. asked, Write down for me something that you hear the Messenger of Allah, uh, Allah say. He dictated <coughs> to me and I wrote out. I heard him for me asking too many questions, mm -hmm. costing money, and I don't know. Mm -hmm. Type. So the second hadith here. Warrad, yeah? And Warrad. Yeah? Taib, uh, Muhammad bin Salam, yani he informed us that the Jarir uh, bin Abdullah, he said and informed us from Abdul Malik bin Umair and Warrad. Okay? Narrated Warrad. Uh, Katib al Mughirah ibn Shu'bah, the scribe of al Mughirah bin Shu'bah, said, Kataba Mu'awiyah ila al Mughirah, Mu'awiyah radiallahu anhu, Mu'awiyah bin Musafir radiallahu anhu, <coughs> wrote to al Mughirah, okay, and ask, Uktub ilayya bima samat min Rasulillah, write down for me. Something that you heard the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Yani, in this hadith is indicate that Warad, he was one of the Katib al Wahi. Okay? Uh, uh, some of uh, Sahaba radiallahu anhu ajma'in, they can read and write. Some of them name and call as Kutab al Wahi, the writers of Wahi. Okay? One of them is Warad here. Fa'mu'awiyah bin Abu Sufyan radhi anhu asked him could you please inform me or uh, what you have what you wrote from the uh, word of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then qala warid fa'amla alayya wa katabtu biyadayya inni sami'atuhu then the warid said he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dictated to me and I wrote out he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dictated to me and I wrote out okay I heard him Samiatuhu. In this hadith, it's hadith qawli. Eh, Rasulullah he said, and Warrad, he was there and he heard. And now he informed us. Eh, Samiatuhu. So this is very important that if we learn or study Al Quran, Sunnah Manawiya Khasatan, especially, then we have to yani, open our mind and to concentrate and listen nicely. One of the sharat in talabul ilmi okay looking for the ilmu is a sam'u hearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Allahumma salli ala Muhammad one of the surah qaf ayat number 37 surah qaf okay surah 50 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in that ayat surah 50 5 0 Ayat 37 Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Inna fi thalika la dhikra Fahum Liman kana lahu qalbun Aw al-qasam'a Wa huwa shaheed That is the ayat eh Indeed In that is a reminder Dhikra Reminder Fahum 
Okay, liman kana lahu qalbun fa whoever has a heart and aw alqa sam'a and who listens alqa sam'a okay uh, so we have to listen fa as-sahaba radiyallahu anhu ajma'in every time rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam said all of them they keep silent and listening to him that is why they narrated the hadith by saying sami'tuhu i heard from him okay is direct okay sami'tuhu he said what is he he, he, he wrote this is the word of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam yanha an kathrati as-su'al wa idha'ati al-mal wa an qila wa qal three points here that rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam forbid asking too many questions too many question and sometimes that question may be not necessary such as bani israil when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to musa alayhi salam please tell to you people okay that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them to slaughter a cow and they ask few question many questions and there are questions it's not to make them understand but to excuse they don't want actually to obey allah such question please rasulullah he forbid it too much question one of the sahaba one day when rasulullah sallam was with them and he gave the khutbah suddenly that man he stood up and he said ya rasulullah man abi who is my father actually fulan bin fulan rasulullah said why you ask me the unim is fulan bin fulan you know already father why you ask me so such kind of question is forbidden do not ask a question sometimes asking a question is wajib fas'alu ahla dhikri in kuntum la ta'lamun surah 16 number 43 surah 21 chapter number 21 verse number 7 fas'alu ahla dhikri in kuntum la ta'lamun ask those who are knowledgeable if you don't know sometimes it's wajib sometimes maybe yeah it is better to ask to make sure whether what we heard okay it is right or not you can ask such question or sometime maybe you raise a question for the benefit of the rest sometime the rest maybe they don't want to i mean they want to ask but they feel maybe the shame again so maybe some will raise a question for the benefit of the rest of the people is good okay and this hadith that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he forbid asking too many question a question which it is not necessary qawlul <laughs> ulama the yahudi said please ask ya musa your lord what kind of baqara what kind of cow you are allowed and every time they ask a question and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he answer in the end subhanallah al karim to find such cow is very very difficult while allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he ordained them with a very clear message slaughter of to, to slaughter the a cow it is i mean every one of them they know already so la ya ayyuhalladhina alla amanu la tas'alu an asya'a in tubda lakum tasukum chapter number 5 verse allahumma salli ala muhammad 51 maybe this ayat al quran al karim ya ayyuhalladhina amanu la tas'alu an asya'a in tubda lakum tasukum or you who believe do not raise or ask a question if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer that question that mean you may not bear it you may not do it because it may be difficult eh yeah? ayat which ayat yeah not not 51 okay 1 5 maybe ana kulli hal la tas'alu an nasha'in tubda lakum tasukum in so chapter 5 uh, allahumma salli ala muhammad ayat 115 maybe or 135 115 no 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 chapter 5 chapter 5 okay chapter 5 1 3 al maida al maida ya ayyuhalladhina amanu la tas'alu di ayat la tas'alu an asya'a in tubda lakum tasukum ana kulli hal so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he inspire me the, the chapter is right but the ayat ke okay i i'll continue the hadith okay Okay, not to uh, many questions. Um, 
Number two, wa idha'atul mal. Okay. Wasting money. Mal be money wealth. 101. Thank you very much. Zakillahi khairan. Chapter 5, 101. Okay. Number two is wasting money or wealth. Uh, uh, Rasulullah SAW, he forbid it. For example, we spend for something, actually we don't need it. That is idha'atul mal. Or we spend, na'udhu billah, in ma'asiyat. That is idha'atul mal. But if we spend in the cost of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as much as we can, this is not wasting uh, money or wealth. Because just now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, let me refer again, chapter 25, verse number, um, Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad, 60, 66 maybe. Chapter 25, hold on eh, 25, Surah Al-Furqan, that one of the uh, characters or the qualities of the Ibad rahman in ayat here, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, walladhina, ayat number 67, sorry, not 66, 67, walladhina idha anfaqu, and they are those who, when they spent their wealth, lam yusrifu, Okay. Do so not excessively. Walam yaqturu or sparingly. Wakana bayna dalika qawama. Okay. But are ever between that. Yani justly or moderate. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this ayat He guide us how to spend our wealth. Among of the scholars when Allah said here, إِذَا أَنْفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا They said, لَا خَيْرَ فِي الْإِسْرَافِ It's not good. In israf. Okay? In excessively. Whatever we do, if it is excessively, it's not good. لَا خَيْرَ فِي الْإِسْرَافِ Another Muslim scholars they replied, they said, La israfa fil khair. It is not israf, it is not excessively, if in a good way, in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? From this ayat. Okay? Israf and iqtar. So, first group of mu'ulama, they said, La khaira fil israf. It is not good if you spend your wealth excessively. And the other one said, it is not iqtar, it is not israf, it is not excessively, if you do it, you spend it in the cause of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they say here, la israfa fil khair, la khaira fil israf, the other one, la israfa fil khair. Tafadhali. That one is the uh, issue of the uh, will, that one. Uh, that one is real. Here is how to spend every day. Eh? La israfa, la khaira fil israf, wa la israfa fil khair. Okay, chapter 25, just now, yeah? Ayat number 67. Yeah, yeah, money or wealth. That one is real, it's different. That one is different. That one is wasiyat. That one is different. Okay? And the wasiat is another chapter. This one is spending. This one is is a general in anything. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow on us this rizqi. How to spend it? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, spend it. Lam yusrifu wa lam yaqturu. Not extravaganza, not also stingy. La. But here is if we spend in the cost of Allah, even ten dollars, for example, is not excessively. But if a Muslim he spend one dollar for ma'asiyat is it is haram it is excessively it's not the, the number one that la khaira fil israf is uh, referring to a number and the other one is referred to the quality quality the other one is quantity the other uh, first one and the second one is quality so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he um 
encourage us or he ordain us to spend our wealth in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa anfiqu mimma razaqnakum min qabli ayyatiya ahadakum al maut spend okay, out of rizqi which we bestow on you in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we spend for example 1,000 in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 1,000 dollars it is not israf it is not extravaganza it is not excessively one dollar okay we spent in ma'asiyat okay buying a cigarette one dollar for example only one dollar that is excessively <laughs> to buy empat nombor eko for example I mean for the maizir gambling one dollar gambling this is rough the issue is not the number but the quality Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he wants us to spend our wealth okay if we refer to chapter 28 Verse 77, there are four points which Allah advised us to spend, how to spend our wealth. Okay? Surah 28, verse 77. Wabtagi This is number one. Okay? To yani, look for the good life in hereafter we may use all the ni'mat which Allah bestowed on us for example wealth okay so do it as your capital for your investment in the bank of akhirat okay subhanallah al-karim number one wa bataghi fi ma atakallahu daru al-akhirat number two wa la tansana sibaka min al-dunya number three wa la wa ahsin kama ahsan Allah ilayk and number four wa la tabghir fasada fi al-ardi Inna Allah la yuhibbul al-Masrif Inna Allah la yuhibbul al-Masrif Fadlan Shaykh, in that hadith where the Sahaba wanted to give all his wealth to Rasulullah and he said don't do that also give the wasiyah wasiyah yeah it is a part of hadith which you mentioned earlier okay that's Anas bin Malik radiyallahu anhu okay taib then number three number three refer to our hadith here that Rasul Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He forbid us Number three is Wa'an qila wa qala Okay Idle talk We are not sure actually And today in Audhu Billah We have very smart Very smart handphone <laughs> And quite easy to do At the good or bad Through this It is a ni'mat from Allah actually This is a ni'mat from Allah But it's up to us Our finger We will time it and there's something good or bad and this finger in akhirat will talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-yawma nakhtimu ala afwahim wa tukallimuna aydihim astaghfirullah alim astaghfirullah alim wa tashadu arjiluhum bima kani yaksibun in surah yasin you know already lah especially the Malay people here they know already yasin and they used they used to yani to recite every Thursday night so uh, I won't yani translate it because they know better than me اليوم نختم على أبي وتكلمنا أيديهم استغفر الله العظيم استغفر الله العظيم يا الله please use it for I mean to spread the word of Allah the good things the عمى الإسلامية through this one eh yeah and يعني do not spread the معصية through the يعني your handphone use it as alat for the دعوة a tool for the دعوة okay على كل حال قيل وقال and استغفر الله العظيم today we have to implement chapter forty nine verse number six يعني every time we got a message or we had a news from anybody else please make sure whether that news is يعني right or not okay whether it is authentic or not Allah said in chapter 49 verse 6 Surah Al-Hujurat verse 6 Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allah said Okay Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu In jaakum fasiqun binaba'in Fatabayyanu Antusibu qawman bijahalah Fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum Nadimin Allahu Akbar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He knows Okay Before it happened 
Okay, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind us through this ayat, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu, all you who believe, all you who have believed in Allah, believe in hereafter, believe in Al-Quran Al-Karim, believe in the Messenger Shaykh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in ja'akum fasiqun, if there comes to you a fasiq, well, ayyadu billah, disobedient, want, okay, binaba'in, okay, he comes to you, with an information naba news okay information what should we do fatabayyanu investigate verify investigate okay so i got a message from a friend of mine normally i will ask him back <laughs> so would you like to tell me please where is the the source from this for, for this news how do you get that? Who sent it to you? Okay? And sometimes, he replied to me, I got it from Fulan, Fulan, Fulan. And sometimes, he didn't reply, to me, I ignore it. I don't want to spend. And sometimes, there's a message, please spread to 10%. You will get dot, 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 dot. <laughs> Maybe this is from the provider. <laughs> Maybe we don't know. <laughs> okay? So, no, so if we believe that can to other people, is it a shirik? Not shirik, but it's a sin. There is a sin, of course. Sin, yeah, there is a sin. Here in this ayat, Naba, Naba bimana is a news or information. And now we are in, 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 in era of the, uh, this technology of information. And now it's quite easy, the information. With one finger only, the whole world they know it. Please, yani, keep our fingers from spreading, yani, <laughs> lying, for example. But use it, subhanallah al karim in a good manner, a good way to spread the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or da'wah islamia through the media massa through the mass media subhanallah al-karim now it is very very actually mashallah uh, effective okay either to spread the good things or bad things huh? bad news or good news I mean very very effective as a mu'min subhanallah al-karim you may get a reward from Allah so many reward every time you use your handphone and you spread the word. good word, nice word, advice to people, Amar Ma'am Fnai Munka, through your handphone. MashaAllah. Or, or, or you, you show the people, guide the people to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al Amr bil Ma'ruf, Nasiha Umman. All this is, you will get the reward every second. And otherwise, for those people who spread the bad word, maybe, or the Ma'asiyat, every second they also will collect, collecting, Na'udhu Billah. The bad deed. And other people also will spread and spread and spread. Na'udhu billah min dhalik. Oh, ya Rabbi ya Kareem. Okay? So that is why my hempon is not so smart lah. Okay. Yours is smart. Okay, please. Father. Amen Allah. I want to ask a question. How this habit is related to the Quran and the chapter? Yeah. Okay. How is this hadith related with the Unququl Walidaini? Okay? Okay, uh, this uh, hadith related with this topic, uh, number three here, yes. number three just now, Yani, uh, I didn't talk just now, uh, maybe someone, two person, they are talking each other, then suddenly maybe one of them, they raise the issue of a mother of someone. Okay, or maybe talking about his mother, then he will reply also to your mother. If he said a bad word, that means you against and you disobey your parent. Qila wa qala. It's very general topic. Maybe one of topic is related with your parent. Come call Rasulullah in another hadith. Yasubu ahadun abahu. A man, a person, he condemned his parent. Then the Sahaba said, How come you Rasulullah? When a person condemned his mother, his parent, and he condemned okay, his friend's mother, that means that person condemning his parent. So sometimes you subbu ba'dhu Okay? A friend of mine, then suddenly I'm talking about his mother, for example. 
belly so I asubo or ana asubo I against his mother or I, I say a bad word about his mother of course that my friend will reply to me your mother also dot 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 that mean I condemn my parent fatherly so, uh, coming back to what's happening now yeah. people bashing uh, in Islam uh, this, I mean I see it this way the Muslims themselves are not Muslims so the non-Muslims are condemning Muslims, oh, sorry. Yeah. the religion mm. and the prophet so who who, who, uh, who bears the, the, the sins mm. of what is you said about the prophet and uh, the religion yeah it's okay uh, my comment is maybe not right but condemning religion Allah even the messenger you won't and you cannot stop it and it will happen until the Qiyamah let me read for one ayat chapter 9 verse 65 and 66 65 okay وَلَئِنْ سَعَلْتَهُمْ Chapter 9, verse 65. Okay? Chapter 9, 65. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in this ayat, وَلَئِنْ سَعَلْتَهُمْ لَيَقُولُنَّ إِنَّمَا كُنَّا نَخُوضُ وَنَلْعَبْ قُلْ عَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَزِيُونَ and if you or Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in that time now is maybe yourself if you ask them uh, this ayat refer to the uh, uh, one occasion I mean in the battle of uh, Hunayn there were the Munafiqun who joined the Muslim troop and they were in the, their uh, tent and Rasulullah is another tent they were talking about the Messiah of Allah and Muslimin. They said, we never see a man like Muhammad and his friend. They love dunya very much. Because they thought by holy fighting that they will get the Muslim will get the their what is uh, uh, booty or, or al anfal, ghanima. So this one after he said we never see a man okay, he loved dunya trauma like Muhammad and his friend and then of course they were yeah, ni, um, with themselves talking I know. and then the other one also yeah 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 we never also see a man who um, have been uh, like Muhammad and his friend then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he revealed this revelation to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and after that, Rasulullah he sent a sahaba to that tent. If I don't mistaken, Ali or whosoever. Please come to that tent and ask them what they said, what they have been said among themselves. They thought, they thought that Rasulullah didn't hear it. Of course, Rasulullah he didn't know. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed him through Jibreel. So when they came to Rasulullah, then Rasulullah asked them, okay, what did you say just now? <laughs> what did you say? What they said? Inna ma kunna nakhudu wa nal'ab. We were only conversing and playing. Okay? We didn't say seriously, just talking, yani. Sembang, sembang, that is the, <laughs> our language. Okay, it's not seriously. But, what is the next? Bull! Say to them, Is it Allah and His servant, His verses, Al Quran Al Karim, and His messenger that you were mocking? What well, they said, Sorry, Allah, sorry, Allah, <laughs> please forgive me, sorry, sorry, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive us. Then what Allah said, the next ayat, La ta'atadiru, make no excuse. Why? Qad kafartum ba'da imanikum. You have this belief after you believe. There were munafiqun. So I referring to this ayat, okay, that a people will make a mock, mockery to Allah, 
okay, his verses, his religion, and Rasul, we can't stop it. I mean, it will come out from the mouth of the kuffar, our enemy, mushrikin, or even from munafiqin. Remember, brothers and sisters, munafiqun, the hypocrites also are our enemy. And even more dangerous than the kafir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind you in chapter 63, verse number 4. 63, number 4. Just before end of that ayat, Allah said, Okay? Humul adawu. They are enemy. They are your enemy. Fahdarhum. Beware of them. Chapter 63, verse number 4. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَهُمْ تُعْجِبُكَ أَجَسَامُهُمْ وَإِنْ يَقُولُوا تَسْمَعْ لِقَوْلِهِمْ كَأَنَّهُمْ خُشْبٌ مُسَنَّدَ يَحْسَبُونَ كُلَّ صَيْحَةٍ عَلَيْهِمْ Next word. هُمُ الْعَدُوُّ They are your enemy. فَحْذَرْهُمْ Beware of them. This ayat, chapter 9, 66, 65, just now, refer to the munafiqeen, to hypocrites. So we have enemy among of mushrikun, kafirun, munafiqun. And munafiqun, they stay with you, among us, with us in the Muslim community. That is why Allah said, beware of them. They are your enemy. Who said this ayah just now? Who said that they make a mock, mockery to Allah, his verses, and Rasul? Munafiqun. And when they came to Rasul, they excuse, sorry, sorry, forgive us, forgive us. Allah said, no. Just know you will believe, but now because of that, you disbelieve. So one of the, um, what is uh, many, uh, one of the activities which will nullify iman of a mu'min is mocking the religion of Allah. Mocking Rasul. If they are non muslim mocking the messenger, I mean, we can accept it. Abu Jahal and the gang, <laughs> Abu Lahab, until the end of the world. But they are among those people who said, I believe, who said, Wa shadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. And yet, they make mocking the Messenger of Allah. They are the munafiqun. What should we do then? As a moment. So we should, of course, to yani qum, stand up. And warning the people. Explain to the people. If non Muslim, you can come to them. Come to them and tell them. Because why? He's not Muslim. He doesn't know. Then for me, that is actually it's a good chance and, and opportunity to da'wah. To do a da'wah, come to him. And explain to him what is the right thing. Tafadal ya amanallah. Yeah. But there is in Sunnah there is some example that Rasulullah sent some Sahaba Jamaa to punish them to to kill them like Kabir bin Asra, Murafi. So should we take this example and should we execute this or these are forbidden in some next context? Okay. We may we may uh, follow it and explain it that Sunnah Nabawiyah, but provided who uh, will uh, ask you to do so, it's not personal. Rasul in that time, as the statement, as Ulul Amri, so the order it must come from Ulul Amri, not a personal. That is why to have Ulul Amri is wajib. In order to keep the religion. Ya ayuhu al-lazina amanu ati'a Allah. Wa ati'a al-rasul. Wa ulil amri. Min kum. Not min hum. From among yourself. So we neglect in that ayat. So how are we going to implement that hadith. The sunnah nabawiyah. When we don't have. Yani. Ulil amri. You mentioned earlier in that hadith. Rasulullah asked another sahabat. 
okay, to punish for example that person. So the order must come from Ulul Amri. Not only after this class you bring out your sword and then you look up for why is it why is it and I go, no, you cannot like that. This must be an Ulul Amri. Okay? See, not the ordinary people. We need where are the Ulul, our Ulul Amri? Who are the Ulul Amri among yourself? Those who govern okay, the um, people, society, and the country by Kitabullah and Sunnah Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because in that ayah, chapter 459, fi shay'in. And if you differ in anything else among yourself, farudduhu, refer it to whom? Ilallah, yani to Al-Quran, wa rasul to his hadith. In kuntum tu'minuna billahi wal yawmil akhir. If you believe in Allah and in the hereafter, so the Muslim government is the government who govern the country and the people, including of course non-Muslim, based on Kitabullah and Sunnah Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, based on Al Quran. Now we don't find it in majority Muslim community. So our government they do govern us based on Al Quran and Kitab Kitabullah Al Quran. And Sunnah Nabawiyah. So, we hope may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani guide our rulers, our leaders yani to govern the people and the country by Al-Quran and Sunnah Nabawiyah. Okay? Of course, we need we need the people who well versed about Al-Quran and Sunnah as we need the people well versed in information technology, in computer technology. So, we need more the people those who well versed of Al-Quran and Sunnah they are independent people they are Al-Ulama they are two pillars in community, in society, in a country Ulul Amri means two according to our Ulama first is the government, the other one is Ulama Ulama is to guide us halal and haram the government to implement it we need this, these are the two pillars okay, of the country Ulama and Umaro Umaro is Amir and ulama, we need ulama, and it is, you know, jihad fi sabillillah, okay, yani fighting in the holy war is wajib. But in one ayat we find in chapter nine, verse one hundred twenty-two, that not it is not for all the Muslim must go all of them to the holy war. Let few of them, yani who study and learning the Al Quran and Sunnah, chapter nine, one hundred twenty-two. وَمَا كَانَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لِيَنْفِرُوا كَافَةً فَلَوْلَا نَفَرَ Okay? مِنْ كُلِّ فِرْقَةٍ طَائِفَةٌ لِيَتَفَقَّهُ فِي الدِّينِ لِيَتَفَقَّهُ فِي الدِّينِ To study, to learn deeply a religion. وَلِيُضِلُوا قَوْمَهُمْ إِذَا رَجَعُوا إِلَيْهِمْ لَعَنَّهُمْ يَحْذَرُونَ And to warn their people if then come back to their country. This is the ulama. And we need also Umar too. If ulama and umar they work together side by side, complement each other, mashallah, we will get okay, the ni'mat of this. But if both of them, yani they fight, fight one another, they are not the same word, for example, then the rest of the people, who will guide them? Who will govern? So we need al-ulama wal-umar. For Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was Amir statement in the same time also Rasulullah Sallallahu is the Rasul Allah the religious person so in Rasulullah Sallam he both even in Abu Bakr as Siddiq Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even ordained us all of us you have to follow my Sunnah and the Sunnah al Khulafa al Rashidun al Mahdiun min ba'di abdu alayha bin Nawazij kama qala Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam okay وإياكم نعم yeah you can refer that one the footnote okay thank you very much okay so uh, next chapter number eight next time not now <laughs> It's only 10 o'clock. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay? 
Any other questions Stop. for this topic? Which one is the worst of character? The non-Muslim who condemn about the religion mm -hmm. versus the uh, Islamic scholar All right. who spread bid'ah mm -hmm. plus hadith palsu. Yeah, of course. That uh, those people who spread the hadith palsu is also, subhanallah, it is uh, worse than those who mockery. Yeah, Muslim. they don't understand. Yeah. Okay. So now, yani in, in almost in every Muslim community, there are people who spread the not authentic the hadith Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam hadith mawdu. Especially now in Rajab, Ya Rabbi Ya Karim, in your hand point, people send to you. Yeah. Okay? What should you do? What kind of good deed in this month? The Rajab. Okay, whosoever dot dot dot, whosoever dot dot dot, na'udhu billah min dhalik. All this is mawdu. Okay? How dare they he recruit the name of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for something which he never taught us. This is more dangerous actually. Because most of Muslim are ignorant. For the ignorant people, they thought if it has come from Sheikh, from Mawlana, from Abu Ka, Abuya, or from Ustad, they'll take it. Yani got a warranty, this they said, oh this is right. Because it comes from our Sheikh. The most of the people they are ignorant. As the Yahudi, okay, the Yahudi in that one time also it mentioned in uh, Surah Al Baqarah was seventy eight. Um, al kitaba illa amaniya wa inhum illa yudhunun. Ayat seventy nine. Fawailu lil ladina yaksubun al kitaba bi aidihim. Thumma yaqulun hada min an nillah liyashtalu bihi thamana qalila. Okay, fawailu lahum min ma katabat aidihim. The conclusion for these two ayat When the majority of the people are ignorant Of the religion There are people who will take advantage From the ignorance of the people They take advantage Now that ayat is Not only for the Jew in that time You see the substance of that ayat Not the reason behind it So it now it will repeat and repeat and repeat And now it happened Asati the among of Ustad, Subhanallah wal Iyadu Billah. They spread the Maudu Hadith Maudu, and many people, yeah, need follow him. Then, of course, for that Ustad, he got a mileage. And today also, I got also a message that um, uh, Ramadan will come, Inshallah Taala, after two months, maybe or three months. So there's a Ilan here, announcement from one of dot 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 that. I am going, inshallah, during Ramadan for Umrah. Then whosoever I am going to, the, to uh, this Umrah, my, one of my program is to send dua, get to dua and send Al-Fatiha to your parents, whosoever who passed away already. So, if you want, please, you yani fulfill this. Uh, yani, uh, uh, okay? So, to fill up, one person, five dollars or ten dollars, I don't know. This is just Ustad Fulan. Okay, if your parent passed away already and you want me okay, to ask Allah forgive for Allah's forgiveness for your parent, I'll do it, you know, in Makkah and Masjid al Haram. But of course, one person is $10. And now many people come, come in and fill up. Well known Ustad. They are, he is someone and I'm someone. You see? <laughs> Subhanallah al Karim. Isn't it? It's a different. Wallahu alam. Thank you very much. <laughs> Wallahu alam. Thank you. Thank you. Wa a'udhu billah. Wa a'udhu billah. So that ayat, the essence of that ayat, 78 and 79, will repeat and repeat and repeat. Beware of it. And please ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. Allahumma ahdina. Allahumma arina al haqqa haqqa. Ya Allah, show to us the right is the right and please strengthen us to follow it. Okay, one of the major uh, ni'mat from Allah, great ni'mat from Allah is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow on you right understanding of this religion. Man arada bihi khayran, ya'ni yufaqihu fi deen. And many ayat and hadith. Thank you very much. Wallahu alam. Subhanahu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa